pray that your families are well and that your homes are safe. And if your homes are not in full operation, we pray that they will be very, very soon. Welcome to worship. This month is Black History Month. And all month long, we've been celebrating Black voices. Black achievements are always celebrated year round. However, this month, we really just lean into Black voices and celebrating Black culture and Black, uh, um, Black power. And so we're so grateful this morning to be able to invite you into worship and invite you to center your hearts and minds around um, God this morning. We welcome you and hope that worship will touch you and uh, inspire you in a, in a new way. As we begin shortly, we invite you to take whatever posture feels comfortable. We invite you to sing along and worship with us and pray with us and really be involved in this worship experience. Again, welcome. Let us pray. Holy One, as we meet this morning, our minds are still preoccupied with the events of last week. Some of us continue to operate in situations that are veritable disaster zones. And others of us may well be still exiled from our living spaces. Eternal Spirit, we have been reminded of the power of the forces of nature, which we too easily take for granted and assume will always work in our favor. Even now, we recall our feelings of powerlessness and utter vulnerability when structures and processes that were guided by superficial and even opportunistic assumptions were quickly undermined. So dear God, in our continued shock, anger, and worry, surround us with your grace and peace. And even as we pray, remind us that you are our comfort and strength in times of trouble. By your spirit, excite our imaginations regarding creative possibilities for negotiating the current terrains of life and for reconstructing the foundations of our lives in the times ahead of us. In the midst of these considerations and imaginations, 
and as we struggle to address our dislocations, remind us that there are still many reasons for gratitude and thanksgiving. And cause this attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving to pull us outside of ourselves so that we are not only concerned about our own situations, but we become attentive to the needs of others and begin to perceive ways we can become available to support them in small and big ways. Remind us, dear God, that compassion is not simply worrying about others or even praying for them. It, had, it has to do with the willingness to enter their situations in concrete ways and literally to suffer with them for their benefit. Holy God, as we look to the days, weeks, months, even years ahead, flood our hearts and minds with appreciative anticipation for the ways our increased consciousness of human connection with the rest of nature will make us more ecologically committed. We will become more committed to develop connections with others and nurture relationships that will be fed by a disposition of magnanimity and hospitality. Help us to anticipate the ways we will work to ensure that our public leaders are driven by a desire to serve their constituencies rather than themselves and their friends. Drive us to anticipate and make us ever grateful for the life of service to which all of us in this worship service and all who are connected to Bright have been called. Amen. Hey there, y'all. Leslie Polk here. I hope you all are well, um, taking care of self um, with all that has been going on. Be encouraged. Um, we're in this thing together. <clears throat> the piece that I will be reciting for you is called Trinity River. Um, so here goes. That out of which the river comes is that into which the river goes. Howard Thurman, 1945. Once upon a time before any words could be used to exemplify elements of our speech, and before names were used to configure thoughts of how we would think things to be, and long before creation stories could begin within the beginning, there was a sense of peace. And I'm not talking about a type of freedom from tranquility, but more so a balance of tension that ran deep within the abyss. The cosmos was in alignment, no matter how chaotic it seemed to be. And all existing matter and space could shapeshift into all types of transforming energies. And that is how our people embrace life to be. I'm talking about our great ancestors who lived along the Nile River Valley, who used symbols of nature, metal netta, to communicate their existence within their moments of eternity. They lived off the ancient African soil that resembled their dark brown skin. And when the river would flood, it fertilized their character of excellence within that dark brown skin, ancient Kemites, Nubians. And what we know as present day Sudanese, these were our first doctors astrologers, leaders, and philosophers, excellence by any means because meanings of excellence was their life's doctrine. And then life transformed into different types of energies. And as the river flows from the source of the sea, there was pushed back into that source of the sea. So then there was migration, immigration, power trips, and current tides that maneuvered a people along the Niger, the Congo, and perhaps the Ocean River tides who would soon develop their own system of existing. But that ancestral connection to that great abyss never really escaped their existence. They remained committed to earth honoring practices and beliefs, serving as their own leaders, architects, doctors, and educators through movement and speech. I'm talking about our West African ancestors long before colonization and transatlantic slavery. 
But then life transformed into different types of energies. And as the river flows from the source of the sea, there was pushed back into that source of the sea. But this time, it appears negotiations were made based on faulty prismacies. So some of our people were tortured across the ocean's water, where many would find their way along the river Mississippi, becoming enslaved nurturers, healers and practitioners, soul singers, land keepers, explorers and abolitioners, exceeding expectations by becoming policy makers, educators, scientists and musicians, lawyers, creative artists, barbers and beauticians, office workers, entrepreneurs, civil servants and advocate seekers, straight up game changers to fight the currents that have been waved up against them. There's a transforming of energy that always seems to take place. And as the river flows from the source of the sea, so too is there pushed back into that source of a sea. And now I find myself along the River Trinity. My soul having waded through the waters of a misinformed history, which makes moments like these important for our future people's history. Because just as this body of water, along with highways, walls, and train tracks have served to separate our communities, whether unconsciously or strategically, we must continue to push back. Because that eternal energy that flooded the veins of our many ancestors sees some people still out here suffering, so we must continue to push back for the purpose of peace. And I'm not talking about a sense of freedom from tranquility, but more so a balance of tension because that which comes from will find self in situations of transforming energies. It requires one to flow back into that source of a sea you see like the late great Langston Hughes once said. I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood and human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I say, peace. Sure. Today, we welcome back Stephanie Hard, pronounced she, her. She is originally from Houston, Texas and has been living in Dallas forward since 2016. She got a bachelor's in music business for Hardin Simmons University in Albine, Texas, and subsequently realized the power of the love for her music and its ability that it has to build community. Stephanie is currently the worship architect at Galileo Church in Forward, Texas where she works on pastoral staff alongside Dr. Reverend Katie Hayes and Remy Shores to create and cultivate the beauty through liturgy and song or a God who is beautiful. Stephanie says that she's passionate about God's love and justice for all in the world. And she's constantly pursuing how the intersections of music, design and technology can reach and create vibrant communities within us, the world that God still love. Steph swears by the inexplicable nature of music to give beautiful common voice to our shared human experience and love when she shares, or when she can hear it in practice every Sunday evening of the world with Galileo Church. Please, Welcome back, Steph Hoard. Darker the days and darker the where your love shines and in my lowest place in the highest of heights with you I'll abide for all of my cares don't seem to worry me
your promises No, I can't help but sing Sing with all my heart Of your promise, your promises to me Oh, your promises to me Life nor death, joy or depression can sway your affections. Cause all throughout the years you've remembered your love, your love for us. Oh, where all of my cares don't seem to worry me. Your grace will, grace will carry me in your arms. And I can't help but sing, sing with all my heart of your promises. No, I can't help but sing, sing with all my heart of your promise, your promises to me, oh, your promises to me, your promises to me. Well, it is that time to go over upcoming events. A reminder to you that February is not over. Bright Community Coffee Hour is this Thursday at 11 a.m. Um, so take out your phone, pull up the calendar, and start putting this stuff in your phone. Because not only is there great stuff happening the rest of this week, but in March, Let's start with Tuesday, March the 2nd. Yes, I intend on seeing you here at 11 a.m. next Tuesday for chapel. But in the evening, um, it's almost like a precursor to the NBA All-Star Game. We have our own All-Star lineup for an amazing community conversation. Tuesday, March the 2nd from 7 to 8 p.m. I'm talking Dr. Ordain. I'm talking Dr. Marshall, Dr. Lazada, Dr. Lee, Dr. Feldman. All will be here. Um, with us on Tuesday evening to talk about COVID and community one year later. It's going to be an incredible conversation you will not want to miss. And then Wednesday, the third from 7 to 8.30 is Clergy Conversations. It's such a remarkable moment for ministers, those in ministry or those considering ministry to get together, be nurtured, to be guided, to just talk about what it means to be clergy in our community. So um, I really encourage you to, to be there the next evening on the third for Clergy Conversations. Also a heads up, you'll definitely wanna put this in your calendar for mid-March, um, Facing Trauma, Healing Amid Hurt. It's our first week that will happen on the 17th from 7 to 8.30. Uh, this will be a three week series. Um, it's going to be led by Reverend Aretha Fluker, uh, Dr. Barbara McClure, and then also a visiting uh, guest, Dr. An Ranir Amin. Um, and they will be talking about um, understanding trauma and implications. It's going to be a really very powerful three-week series. So I'd encourage you, definitely, if you don't have your phone with you, write it down on a little post-it note or take out your day timer. You will not want to miss all these amazing opportunities in our rich community. Um, not only Bright students and staff, but those in the surrounding areas, all are welcome here at Bright. Please hear the scripture from Matthew 7, 15 through 20 uh, from the NRSV. 
Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will know them by their fruits. I have the pleasure of introducing our speaker today, friends. Um, and our speaker today is William Deshay C. Jackson, who is a third year Master of Divinity student, a fourth generation disciple of Christ, and is seeking ordination with the Mid-American Region of the Christian Church DOC. They earned a bachelor's degree in music education from Culver Stockton College with an emphasis in piano and voice. Outside of Culver Stockton, DeShay has performed with the Quincy Concert Band, Quincy Community Theater, Muddy River Opera Company in Quincy, Illinois, Union Avenue Opera Company in St. Louis, Missouri, Big River Swing Machine in Quincy, Illinois, the Bullis Rudder Big Band in Keokuk, Indiana, Langdon Center Big Band in Granbury, Texas, of Many Colors Vocal Ensemble in Fort Worth, Texas, and Uptown Carolers in Dallas, Texas. Deshay has served as the choir director and pianist for Canton Christian Church in Canton, Missouri, music minister for St. Martin in the Fields Episcopal Church in Keller, Texas, and currently serves as minister of music for First Christian Church in Granbury, Texas. Deshay loves sloths, jazz, and aspires to be a womanist co-conspirator. Please welcome Deshay. I would be remiss as well as um, <laughs> in trouble if I didn't thank our lovely moderator of the Bright Black Seminarians, who I affectionately just call my president. Uh, thank you, Chelsea, for that. And also in Black church fashion, I want to give thanks to the president, deans, Reverend Fluker, and we also have to include Lauren because Lauren makes a lot of things run here. Um, <laughs> I wanna thank you for this opportunity, this privilege, and this honor to be in this space, to be a part of celebrating Black voices here at our Bright Chapel experience. So I'm gonna ask you to interact just a little bit, not much, I'm not gonna pull much. But the first thing I'm going to ask you is to breathe in through the nose with me and out through the mouth. Creator and sustainer, God, we give thanks for the witness here that is just waiting for something new, something to shake up, something to restore, to heal, and to bless God. We ask that a word be present today from you, not of my own pettiness, not of my own uh, of into intentions, not of my own selfish needs, but God of the needs you call for us to meet. We raise all these things and we ask that you decrease me and increase thee in this time. Amen. Beware, caution. Oh, baby, no, what is you doing? I mean, how could this happen? I mean, I just like, I mean, like, how could they do that? I want to mean like, I mean, what the? How is it possible that we reside in a context where Christianity was fine to colonize and go ahead and hold on to that thought, uh, but will be the first to claim victimization in our current season is that in a global pandemic, how is it possible that places who claim to care about the humanity of others also continue to be petri dishes of coughing crusaders for Christ, spreading a gospel that is literally death dealing to members of creation? We've seen, we've watched, and um, we've captured some of the escapes of many persons in power, with power, 
who decide to contribute to our systems of oppression specifically. Let's talk about the food apartheid that happens that um, then allows its victims to be gaslit because when they go to get the health that they need, they are told maybe you should eat better, exercise more. But that's not necessarily the point, but maybe it is because the glaring word in this text to me that, and honestly, y'all, it triggers my flight or fight. See, it's, it triggers my anxiety to ask, how much more do we have to avoid or how much longer? And I honestly am sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I believe that this text warning, though, isn't an exaggeration, honestly, but it's really leaning to self and community preservation. So I want us to sit with this word beware, and I want you to sit with me as I go through, because beware might mean beloved. Exist where affirmation resists elimination. Let me say that again. Beware means Beloved, exist where affirmation resists elimination and deny false prophets that proclaim unity when they're only trying to profit off of your identity. See, there is a push in the rhetoric of all body parts matter, yet eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, and maybe this is why no one is coming to help. See, if all the body parts matter, then why is a Band-Aid slapped on those of us who need stitches? These tactics of unification serve as a devaluation to our whole selves because only parts of us have been welcome at the table. Only parts of us have truly been sought after. And honestly, our holiness or our holiness will be left with nothing but holes. When we live in spaces where affirmation resists elimination, we preserve our ability to keep our wholeness intact, y'all. And we deny places and persons this ability because they choose to prey on us. Beloved, exist where affirmation resists elimination. See, beware means, beloved, exist where authenticity resists elimination. One more time. Beloved, exist where authenticity resists elimination and deny false prophets that let you know that all skin folk ain't kin folk. And just because something looks like you doesn't mean that it's gonna like you, doesn't mean that it's gonna help you, and it will also not recognize you as the same created being. The systems of oppression that upheld these ideas that we know to be things of whiteness, of patriarchy, of misogyny, of heteronormativity just trickle down and affect minds in such a way that persons believe these ideals to be second nature to them but somehow forget that they are being oppressed too. Somehow trickle down economics works in this circle, but it never works anywhere else. See, these wolves in sheep's clothing will do everything they can to get close to you. They will go through things of clothing, music, food, and empty pleasantries only to consume your identity and spit out the bones. When we exist in an authentic ways, authentic ways that resist elimination, we resist systems that pit us together, excuse me, pit us against each other to do the dirty work so that their wool is scored and cleaned. And if you don't know anything about sheep or cleaning wool, that's the process of cleaning wool. You score it, but it seems like we're keeping a different type of tally for some of us. Resist systems that seek to eliminate your authenticity. This one is a little more specific but honestly, the message reads for all. 
so hear me. For my black persons and my pro-black friends or always borrowing Dr. Katie Hayes use of co-conspirator, my black friend co-conspirators, beware means beloved. Exist where abundance resists elimination and deny false prophets that produce and sell strange fruit. See, this is a fruit that continues to take the more it is consumed and it poisons the land with its demand for blood. Mother Billie Holiday crooned an eerily haunting tune that is just as sacred as the words we find in our sacred text of the Book of Lamentations. She sings, southern trees bear a strange fruit. Blood on the leaves and blood at the root. Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze. Strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. See, when abundance resists elimination, the idea of scarcity becomes as scarce as its name. Instead of this genocide, this picking off of persons one by one and profiting off of their bodies, we prove that in our resistance, in our living, in our being, that us being here is giving life to many others compared to our tactics using strange fruit on the marketplace that goes for high dollar. And yet, never satisfies. It is a fruit, it is a practice, it is a cultivation that constantly depletes. Beloveds, exist where but abundance resists elimination and turn to each other and this ground that has been poisoned and root ourselves knowing that we cannot be poisoned, that we cannot be poisoned, that we cannot be taken down, that we cannot be used as the fertilizer that continues to perpetuate a system that would rather continue to sell us. And honestly, melanin is a really pretty thing. So mm, questionable, but continues to use our bodies for their own labor. And yet strange fruit is in high demand. Abundance becomes a rare. When abundance becomes practice, blackness remains sacred. Blackness remains flourishing. Beware of false prophets who see the flourishing of blackness and use it for their own tool. In this last one, because I don't like to talk for long. Can I have all of y'all that are in our virtual space lean just a little bit closer to your cameras, just a little bit? Because I want to say something to you, not an ASMR way, but kind of that reassurance way, you know, like, like your favorite auntie, your favorite grandma, your favorite person that just whispers pleasantry to you, that just makes you feel good. Beloveds, I want to say, beware means beloved exists where appreciation resists elimination. I'm going to say it again because I hope you're leaning into it. Beloved exist where appreciation resists elimination and deny false prophets that only want the fruit of your labor in specific seasons. Okay, because one of my favorites, you know, we got Black History Month in February, but it just seems to be that then blackness falls on un, um, just not on the radar. And February then becomes our heightened time. And yet also our other communities of color, our other communities that have been marginalized by the majority also get to have seasons, but never get to have their season. So I'm gonna say this again, beware those who only want your fruit in specific seasons. You are worth more than the work you produce and understand that what is being demanded of you 
is not you. Beware people who feel they can take of your time and also take your energy. Kind of like, I don't know, Texas in this energy crisis, in this uh, power grid situation. But anyway, I won't go too far. Power, the fruit of your labor, you are worth more than the hands that are grabbing at you. You are worth more than the situations that you are sitting in and you are so much more than allowing yourself to be in those. Beloved, this call from the text is not to stress our anxiety, but to alert us that, that our being, that our goodness, that our essence is worth more than being in these places that people just want to ship us out of. Beloved, the, beloved these warnings to the disciples Yes, are about watching people in the church who decide to manipulate words and twist them to fit whatever gain. But we have to remember that it's not just the church that gets away with this. And we've got to remember that the church has also influenced some other people to get away with this. So when we talk about false prophets, y'all, we got to look around. Y'all, we have to beware. We have to be aware of what's going on. And understand that this beware is not anxiety, but it is alert, it is caution, it is self-preservation and community preservation. Because when we are aware of the things that cause harm to our being, we then stop giving energy and time. We then start depleting these things. We then start stripping them of what feeds them. And eventually, little by little, when you start neglecting something like a house or a plant or anything that wants to wilt over, over time it will fall, over time it will crumble. But it also does not mean that you have to sit there with it all the time. Beware in this alertness and watch. Watch for, watch for wolves in sheep's clothing. Watch for those that profit off the bodies. Pro watch those who profit off using strange fruit. Profit off <laughs> of those who want to be prophets. Don't confuse these false prophets with their gain for profit, y'all, because you are worth so much more. Know that when we beware, we become aware of the essence and beauty that God has instilled in us. So ashe and amen to the wholeness and beware. Amen. If you haven't already prepared your communal elements, please go ahead and take a moment to do so now as we still sit and ruminate with that powerful message that Deshay offered us this morning, that challenge to beware of strange fruit. Please uh, feel free to go ahead and gather your communal elements and we'll begin communion shortly. On this day, I invite you to think about the fruit that you bear, the fruit that you bear from season to season and how that fruit uplifts, encourages and inspires other people. 
If there's ever a time that you might bear a strange fruit, I invite you to think back to that time and to think of how you have transformed and how you've grown and how you've allowed and invited God to come into your life and change you and to shift the way that you work and to shift the fruit that you bear. And so on this day, I also invite you to think about Jesus and think about the fruit that Jesus bared in his short life. Think about that fruit and think about the lasting impression that he left us with. And on the night on which he was betrayed, he sat down with his disciples and he shared a communal meal. This communal meal was representative of his life and his ministry. And so he sat with his disciples and he took bread and broke it. And he said, this bread symbolizes my body that is broken and sacrificed for you. Every time you eat it, think of me. Would you eat with me? Likewise, he took a cup of wine and he said, this is my blood that is shed for you. Every time you drink it, remember me and remember this sacrifice. Would you drink with me? God, thank you so much for the life of Jesus. Thank you for him paving the way and showing us how to bear good fruit season after season. Thank you for the transcendent work of his life and how 2,000 years later, we still sit with it. We, we still honor it and we still celebrate it. Thank you so much for allowing us to enjoy that sacrifice and to ruminate in that sacrifice on today. So God, thank you. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Taking my freedom, pulling it off the shelf, putting it on my chain, wearing it around my neck. I'm taking my freedom, putting it in my car, wherever I choose to go, it will take me far. I'm living my life like it's golden, living my life like it's golden, living my life like it's golden, living my life like it's golden. Taking my own freedom, putting it in my song, singing loud and strong, grooving all day long. I'm taking my freedom, putting it in my stroll. I'll be high stepping, y'all, letting the joy unfold. I'm living my life like it's golden, 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 living my life like it's golden. Take it from me I was born into it It comes naturally I'm strumming my own freedom Playing the God in me Representing God's glory Hope God's proud of me I'm living my life like it's golden 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 Golden Living my life like it's golden Living my life like it's golden
God, we hope that you're proud of us. We hope that the fruit that we've been bearing is acceptable in your sight. And so on this day, God, we are so, so thankful. We're thankful for our preacher, Deshay Jackson. Deshay, what a phenomenal message. You challenged us, you encouraged us, and you helped us think more deeply about the fruit that we bear and about honoring the sanctity of that fruit so that it is not exploited. Thank you for that powerful message. And we invite it to just sit with us as we go throughout the rest of this week. Thank you so much, Steph Hort, for that beautiful, beautiful worship this morning. You have a, such a beautiful voice and you're so talented. Thank you so much for sharing your gifts with the Bright community. As always, thank you so much to the Bright worship planning team and all the work that you do, all the work behind the scenes to make sure that technology goes well and to make sure that chat is covered and everything that you do for worship. Thank you so much for your service to the Bright community. So we invite you to stay around after worship today. Our preacher will be joining us and they will be there to soak up all of the praise that we're gonna offer them for their message this morning. So if you're able to stick around for about five minutes after worship today, as we celebrate our preacher, Deshay Jackson. Now unto you, O oh God, who's able to keep us from falling and present us faultless in your presence to the one and only wise, majestic God, all glory, power, and dominion now 